Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Greetings from IRC here in Kabul. My presentation will cover the Afghanistan context, the rationale, and I will jump straight into the key messages thereafter. Um, just a brief on the Afghanistan context. There have been several contextual factors over the last two years which have affected the protection situation and risk landscape in Afghanistan. These include political changes, including the takeover by the de facto authorities in 2021, environmental factors, including climate shocks and the earthquake in 2022, and social normative factors, including the restrictions put in place by the de facto authorities curtailing the the rights of women and girls and their involvement in social life and economic life. So the rationale um, here is driven by the fact that uh, given that background, we've observed that um, gendered restrictions contributed to and exacerbated protection risks for women and other population groups facing systematic discrimination. Therefore, IRC and other protection monitoring partners through the Afghanistan Protection Cluster were able to prioritize five risks for protection monitoring, which wasn't the case in the previous year. One of the key protection risks prioritized for protection monitoring and to be addressed collectively is on denial of resources, opportunities, and services. For example, the February 2023 protection analysis update showed that 36% of respondents mentioned that women and girls were denied access to services, which was way higher in comparison to men and boys. We continue observing an increasing trend in this regard, and this draws the need for, inter for an intersectional look and underscores the importance of desegregated analysis to understand who is affected by protection risks and how, as these will differ from women-headed households, women and girls with disabilities in rural areas, older women, and marginalized minorities such as internally displaced persons. Also, the restricted humanitarian space and ban on female humanitarians brings forth challenges of not only being able to reach populations facing systematic uh, systemic discrimination, but also it influences whose voices and perspectives are included in the analysis needed to inform our response. This, therefore, leads me to the key messages. And uh, the first key message from our end is that is on realizing the localization of assistance Communities should be empowered to conduct protection risk analysis, suggest program adaptations, and monitor protection risks in partnership with local organizations. Um, following community consultations, IRC made several program adaptations. For example, IRC's Women Protection and Empowerment Program was rebranded to Family Support Program, and Women and Girls Safe Spaces were rebranded to family support centers. RC also partnered with a local organization of persons with disabilities to deliver services to men, women, boys, and girls with disabilities. The second key message is that survival is an integral part of protection and an intersectional response is the way forward. We've observed that acute food insecurity requires immediate attention to discourage negative coping mechanisms and strategies leading to increased protection risks. We've observed changes in drivers to household shocks, for example, climate change that resulted to acute food insecurity and consequently survival-related negative coping strategies such as accumulation of debt, selling of assets, street begging, migration outside Afghanistan, and early child marriages. All these have heightened protection risks. The last, our last key message is that a well-coordinated, integrated, and multi-sector multi -sector planning and monitoring is fundamental towards a stronger protection response. 
sector specific integration tools and referrals should be strengthened this underscores the centrality of protection and as part of IRC's integration strategy IRC is collocating multiple services in the same communities to ensure that clients have access to complementary services and referrals between sectors to help address their needs. We've also observed that health and nutrition are a strategic entry point for protection while implementing women and girls programming through the family support centers where services such as food are delivered. I come to the end of my presentation. Thank you very much.